Hi guys, last time we talked about standard form and vertex form for quadratics. Today we will be talking about um, factored form for quadratics and why it's important to review a couple things. Um, a function is linear if it makes a straight line. Quadratics are clearly not linear. We have learned about axis of symmetry, the vertex, the y-intercept. Um, today's new idea will be zeros. So what does that mean? So if we look at this parabola, you see how there's these two dots. These are called zeros because they are on our x-axis. This has no zeros, so it has no solution. This parabola has two intersections, so it has two solutions. And then this parabola touches the x-axis once, so we would say it has one solution. So we can go back and forth. We can either call them zeros or we can call them solutions. They mean the same thing. Parabolas can have one, two, or no solutions, like I showed you there. Um, one way, if you want to just do it by the equation, you can set C to the other side of the equal sign and you can set K to the other side of the equal sign, graph, each side of the equal sign where they intersect, that will be your zero. Um, that's one way to do it. We're not gonna do it like that today. I'm gonna show you a different way. Um, but just so you know, that is one option. But what we are going to talk about are the zeros and how easy it is if you know your zeros, if you know your vertex to graph a parabola. So right here, it doesn't give us the equation. However, it does tell us that the vertex is at the point two comma four. So let's put that on our graph, two comma four. And then it tells us that there are zeros at x equals zero and x equals four. That just means we have a, a point at zero and four. So we're gonna put a point at zero and we're gonna put a point at four. And we can see that from our vertex, it starts opening down. So we can draw the shape of our graph. And now our parabola is all graphed. It wants us to find the axis of symmetry, which easy. We know it goes through the vertex. So it's just a straight line that goes down the middle. So we would say it's x equals 2 because it goes through the number 2. So not too bad. Um, let's continue. Again, last year you guys learned about linear graphs. So you guys could probably easily graph this y equals mx plus b, y intercept is 4, slope of 1, up 1 to the right one, up 1 to the right one, down 1 to the left one, down 1 to the left one, and so on. So we could draw this pretty easily. Um, we could do the same with this graph a y-intercept of negative two, slope of one, up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, down one over one, down one, back one. Again, draw our line. Okay, um, and then if we want, we can say, these have x-intercepts. So we want to look where they cross the x-axis. The first one right here is at negative 4. The second one here is at positive 2. Okay, but why are you showing us this? I'm going to show you exactly why. So let's say I want to put these two linear equations together and make them a quadratic equation. So we're going to multiply them. Let's take our box and let's do x plus four on the top, x minus two on the bottom. We're gonna multiply our box right here, x squared, four x, negative two x, negative eight, um, x squared plus four x minus two, x minus 8. Let's squish this over a little bit. Combine our like terms. 
x squared plus 2x minus 8. Okay, what can we get from this? Um, we can get our y-intercept. Uh, yes, our y-intercept. That's just 0, comma, c. So that would be 0, comma, negative 8. Uh, we can find our axis of symmetry. We know that is x equals negative b divided by 2a. Okay, and then we know a equals 1, b equals 2, and c equals negative 8. So negative 2 times 1, negative 2 divided by 2, so that would be equal negative 1. So we have an axis of symmetry down negative 1. Okay, so let's draw our axis of symmetry down negative 1. Okay, we have a y-intercept of negative 8, we said. Now let's find our vertex. Our equation x squared plus 2x minus 8. That x equals negative 1 because of the axis of symmetry. Okay, so our vertex is negative 1, comma, negative 9. This is our vertex. Negative 1, comma, negative 9. So we know it's opening up. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. And what do you know? Our parabola is actually the same, the same zeros as our individual linear graphs. So it's asking us, what are the x-intercepts of our parabola? They're actually the same. It's negative 4 and 2. And up here, we got negative 4 and 2. They're the same. So you see all this work that I did over here to the right? That was a lot of work. But for me to graph these linear graphs, it was super easy. So long story short, I'm going to teach you how to do the easier way so you guys don't have to do the super long way. Because why not? Um, the x-intercept of your quadratic function and the x-intercepts of its linear factors are the same. So that's our new word. These are called factors. When you factor your quadratic function, it looks like this new form. Um, and if you set your factors equal to zero, and solve, you're able to get your zeros and your solutions. Um, if you, Once you have your zeros, you can find your axis of symmetry by doing the middle point between your two zeros. Or you can use this formula, a plus b divided by 2. So here is your factor form. It's going to look like this. a and b are going to be numbers, and k just can't be 0. Most of the time, it'll be 1 but sometimes it'll be different numbers. Okay, so this one says find your zeros. So how do I do that? Super easy. All you do is you take your first binomial and you set it equal to zero. And then you take your second binomial and set it equal to zero. So if I were to solve for this, what would x equal? Well, I add 7 to both sides. These cancel out, and I get x equals 7. And it's as easy as that. So that means you have a 0 at 7. And then we can do this one. What would x equal here? Add 1 to both sides. Cancel out. x equals 1. So if I'm going to graph this parabola, I already know that there's going to be a point at 7, and there's going to be a point at 1. Makes it real easy. Those are my solutions. Okay, well, what if I have a number in the front? What do I have to do with that? Same thing, set it equal to zero. 
and do it separately. Okay, does four ever equal zero? No, just get rid of it. Um, what would my solution be here? Add one to both sides, we get x equals one. What would x equal here? Subtract three on both sides, x equals negative three, nice. So this means this has two solutions and that means this one also has two solutions. Okay, now it says uh, graph them. Okay, so what number could I put here that would make this zero? Well, I could put two. Two minus two is zero. So that means there's going to be a zero at two. Okay, what could I put here that would make this binomial zero? Negative two. And then if I want my axis of symmetry, it's halfway between those two points. I can look at it, okay, easy, halfway would be zero. Okay, and then I could solve for my um, vertex by just plugging in zero because I know my vertex has to be on my axis of symmetry. And my axis of symmetry is at zero. Okay, so zero minus two and zero plus two. So that's negative two and positive two, which is negative four. So my vertex is at zero comma negative four. Zero, negative four. I got my points, I got my points, I'm good to go. Bam, bam. Easy, done, see how fast that was? And yes, maybe I was a little bit faster than normal, but you guys will get super fast once you are, have practice at it. Okay, let's try this one. What number could I put here to make this binomial zero? We could put negative five. What number could I put here to make this binomial zero? We could put negative one. Okay, and what number is halfway in between negative five and negative one? Negative three. So my axis of symmetry is at x equals negative three. So if we plug this into our equation, Five plus negative three is positive two. Negative three plus one is negative two. So we get negative four. Okay, so my vertex is at negative three and negative four. Negative three, negative four. Bam, bam. See, not too bad, not too bad. Okay, now this one's saying, you know your zeros, now write it in factored form. So as a reminder, factored form is k, parentheses, x minus a, parentheses, x minus b. Um, if you know your zeros, your a and your b are going to be basically the opposite of the x-intercepts. So I'll show you what I mean. So k is just what it is, um, x, if my first one is a positive one, in my equation, I will make it a negative one. This number is a positive eight, so I will make it a negative eight. Why? Because I need to be able to plug this number in to make it zero. So one minus one is zero. I need to be able to plug this number in, eight minus eight is zero. I want to make zero, so that's our goal. So this one's all done, we don't have to do any more. It is now in factored form. Okay. So how would I write this one? 
So five would go first, and then we would have x, and then it's the opposite. So this is a negative seven, so we put plus seven. And then this is a positive three, so we write negative three. Because again, if I were to put negative seven in there, that would make zero. If I would put positive three in there, that would make zero. Okay, and then something in math that we always like to remind people, there's this property called the zero product property. It basically means if you have two parentheses or two um, either monomials or binomials, if you have them multiplying by each other, if one of them is zero, it will make the whole thing zero. So if I look over here, if I make this whole binomial zero, so let's say I put a negative three in here, that's going to make this zero. Zero times anything is going to be zero. So what that means is these solutions can be either or. So normally you'll say my solution is x equals negative three and x equals two, but because it will make the whole thing zero, we say x equals negative three or x equals two. Um, da, da, da. Okay, so let's practice. What number could I put in here to make this binomial zero? Six because six minus six is zero. Okay, what could I put in here to make my binomial zero? Three. Okay, one more. What number could I put here? Negative eight, and what number could I put here? Positive five. Okay. Um, here are some other practice ones. If you want, you can go ahead and pause it, practice on your own. But that is all I have for you guys. Have a great day, and I will see you guys later. Bye.